I just kept on hearing, you know, the trite phrase, blessed and highly favored. And as you were exhorting, I just kept on hearing blessed and highly favored. And I think he was talking, Jesus was talking to all of us. Yes. Yes. Um, so I'm kind of a, a wordsmith, author of five books, one bestseller. So I like to, <laughs> when I, I study words and I, and I kind of like, so I looked up the word blessed this morning. And it really is cool. It, it, the, the, the root meaning means to consecrate with blood. It also means to, uh, to make holy. Yes. And also means bliss. Like find your bliss. So that was pretty cool. But then I, I had to look up favor because when we're talking about highly favored, when the king of kings enters the room and walks around like a lion, we have to honor that. And so not to make blessed and highly favored just a trite phrase that we have that we really actually receive it. And some of the things that uh, the that favor comes in is a over gener over generous preferential treatment yes. by the king, yes. an attitude of approval or liking. Um, it's a badge. It's a badge of honor. An act of kindness beyond what is due or usual. I feel a show of approval or preference. Oh my God. Give unfairly preferential treatment to. So can we all say that we're blessed and highly favored today and really mean it? Amen. One root here is cherish. Cherish the root meaning, so... What a great word, blessed and highly favored. So we got the opportunity to go serve the Lord and suffer in San Diego and uh, Orange County this week. And so uh, suffered for Jesus there in the 71 degree weather on the beach. And <laughs> had, uh, Michelle had pizza delivered on the beach. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> So uh, I hope you didn't have any pork. Um, so really, what happened was is we had an opportunity to to we kind of combine combine a lot of times our vacations with with uh, opportunities to go serve and go go speak. And so this is pretty fun. Uh, is that there's a there's a gathering in San Diego that we've gone I've gone to five times, uh, and it's an invitation only event. And and uh, Justin's invited to speak so far three times and it's about 200 people of rather highly uh, in the world highly influential people and they're they're Christians there too they're undercover we're all we're all sneaking in you know uh, and so you know we're Jehovah sneaky coming undercover because that's so I've kind of been assigned to that realm and that's kind of my assignment and you got to know what your assignment is what God gives you is to infiltrate the world, right? Go out and give. All authority has been given to you, so go out uh, into all the world, right? Okay, so uh, it can be scary at times when you're a representative of God, and uh, and but it can also be so so rewarding. And we're just a, doing our act of obedience, and so uh, by by sheer gift of uh, God's favor on Justin, um, he's he's been speaking on the main stage in front of 200 of these highly influential people. Actors, movie theater, uh, movie movie stars, inventors. I mean, I could go on and on, and it's a it's a who's who. It's like the the founder of the Make a Wish Foundation, and um, Rich Dad Poor Dad's Sharon Lecter, and uh, Les Brown. I mean, these are the kinds of people. It's very expensive to go, and we've been blessed to be able to to speak on the stage and impart what you know what wisdom they they want to hear. Now, there's a lot of worldly stuff that goes on there, um, but I've been kind of given the assignment and being blessed to take the Word of God and put it into my writings in such a way that it's veiled in a way that they don't think that I'm preaching to them. Because once they start thinking that you're preaching to them, they shut down and you get put in a box and you no longer, they can no longer receive. So that's kind of the gift that, that I've been given and that's why um, the five books that I've written, um, I'll explain a little bit about that and I'm going to give you guys the, one of the books that Eddie, and, Eddie Smith, a pastor out of Houston, uh, 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 co-wrote with me. So, uh, and, and, uh, and what we've done is, what's happened is the secular world has stolen all the stuff from, from, the, from the wisdom of the Bible and made it their own. They still use the, yeah. 
they use the wisdom in it, they just twist it around. Well, our job is to bring that twist back to where the spirit of truth. But it doesn't mean that the secular world doesn't have a lot of wisdom that they've stolen from the Bible and use it for their benefit to get rich. I mean, one of the speakers there is, represents the Napoleon Hill Foundation, okay, Greg Reed. And, and it's funny because George's mom was part of that movement of the Think and Grow Rich, Napoleon Hill, and still gets royalty checks to this day. Not a lot because it's, 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 it's been spread out as far as, but I mean, enough to say, hey, we get, we get checks from Napoleon Hill Foundation. Along. And so the common theme that kept on going through this, this conference was legacy. And surprisingly enough, my speech, I didn't know this was going to happen, but my speech when I designed it before I went there was talking about a living legacy. Wow. And so what happened was um, I, I was flying on the last trip back, the fourth trip I'd been there in springtime. And I was on the airplane. I was 35,000 feet closer to heaven. So there was some kind of, I got a download. So <laughs> I, got, I got a download. And, and the, down, the download, have you ever had those downloads? I mean, okay, so God gives you a download and you write them down. And I wrote them down all in order. And I was just like, it was what, it was, what I was meditating and praying on was the fact that this community, when it gets together, ends up being like a church. And, wow. the, and the spirit of harmony and unity, because that's what Napoleon Hill taught. And, when the, when, and they, they're so biblical and think and grow rich, if you look at it. It's, it's when more, two or more are gathered together, a third mind shows up. That's the concept of the mastermind. Well, we know when two or more gather together in his name that he shows up. So parallels to that. And so I was flying back. I was like, what's the commonality of all these people, these high achievers? And, and there were some really good Christian um, speakers on there that had no problem getting up and expressing their faith as well, which was really impressive too. So I wrote, wrote these down. God just gave them to me. And I went back and I shared them in a breakout session to the, to the folks there that who knows where their origins or their spirituality is, but I was able to infuse my, the word into my talk. And, and so, so I wanted to share it with you now. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take all these, I call them be-do's. I first explained to him the two most powerful words in the English language is I am. Now, okay, that's how I started the speech, right? Okay, now for those who are Christians, no, that's pretty powerful. For those who are not, it's like, wow, it's all about me. I am, right, you know? So it's identity and, and what you do. Right? Identity, what you do, your purpose. I, identity and am. I, existence. I, identity and existence, right? Mm -hmm. And so the flip side of that is be do's. So I is be, you're being, what is it that who you are? And do is now that you are that identity, what are you going to go do with it? So I called them be do's, and there were 12 of them. Okay? Mm -hmm. And, and I, I veiled all my uh, scriptures. But they were there. So, and Justin was there, he was a witness. He had the video camera. <laughs> you know, but it's really kind of honoring because I'm, I, was a, I was at 45 minutes to talk and the guy sitting next to me is a 74 year old man named Frank Shankovitz. He's the founder of the Make-A-Wish Foundation. Kindest, gentlest man you'll ever meet. Wears a cowboy hat, was, a, was a, a motorcycle cop for 44 years. Never took a dime from the foundation, even though they're uh, in 80 countries and, and, and giving, making wishes come true for those that are terminally ill. And that's a living legacy. So I'm sitting next, I'm talking next to a living legacy, and he got to, he got to speak after me, which was an honor to, to uh, be able to talk. And he was listening to this too. But I think we're going to find that uh, through these 12 be do's. I think you're going to find some really cool stuff, especially when it comes to what Jesus had to say about that. Is that okay? Can we work, can we can we do a lot of scripture today? Amen. All right. So let's uh, let's get at it. As our old pastor would say, if you have your Bibles with you. Um, so the number one and it's most difficult for me, and I've been working on it. I go through these twelve steps every day. Every day is, and and I'm going to tell you the first seven of them are very much down the line. I just was praying on that on, on during worship, uh, during, about your healing. So keep that filter in mind. The first seven are a personal, a personal thing. The last five are more of a public thing. Okay? So keep that in mind. It's, kind of, it's really neat how that parallel came. But number one is be still. Now, when we got done with worship and pastor was on the floor, 
praising God, having a, I mean, you must have gone somewhere. I mean, that's amazing. <laughs> the stillness and the unity in the air was just sweet. That's why I had to take my shoes off. It's like, you can't even describe it, right? We could have stayed there for a while. You didn't have to hurry that up. <laughs> She's going to the throne room. We should stay there and bring it back. <laughs> so, be still. So, we're going to go to Mark. Mark 1, 34 and 35. And I'm out of the uh, Amplified today. So... It's right after the book of Hezekiah. <laughs> okay, so, and we can go, we can go interactive since we've got a lot of scriptures. Whoever gets it first, go ahead and say it. But, um, 34 is, okay, so this is Jesus out doing, but, but it gives us a clue of how he was being, first of all. So I'm going to go backwards from this. It says, in 35, it says, And in the morning, long before daylight, he got up and went out to a deserted place, and there he prayed. So long before daylight, Jesus gets up and gives us a great example of being still and praying. And then, but if you go into 34, just before that, he was doing a lot of stuff. He was, and he cured many who were afflicted with various diseases, and he drove out many demons, and they would not, he would not allow the demons to talk because they knew him intuitively. And then it's in the morning, long before the daylight, he got up and went out to a deserted place, and there he prayed. So Jesus used the be still concept to get one with the Father and be quiet and be still, and that's really a, a, a difficult thing for us in the the days of the busyness of life and the, trying to turn our minds off from all the, the scattered thoughts, the, you know, the ADD driven by GMOs, right, Sheila? <laughs> and, you know, <laughs> and, you know, and I mean, I, that's one of those things I've really had to practice. And, you know, they, they, you know, the people out there meditate and they do yoga and all this stuff. And who stole meditation? That was, that was out of the Bible. It says meditate on his word, right? So meditate, revolve around. But that's, that's really, he got still before the Lord. And, you know, in Luke 5, 16, he said the same thing. Jesus withdrew to a desert place and prayed. And so I've been really working on that. I, I go down to my dungeon and I have a couch down there and I really try to be still. And it's a, it's a work. It's an effort to clear your mind and, and know your creator. And here I'm talking to all these woohoo people, some of them woohoo people and saying, get one with your creator. Okay, and it was like they were like, "Oh wow, that's a good one." Um, but then Jesus does some other miraculous things while he was still still, uh, like Mark Mark four thirty seven and through forty one. So, what Jesus does is he helps us calm that storm. So he's. In 37, and a furious storm of wind of hurricane proportions arose, and the waves kept beating into the boat so that it was already becoming filled. It kind of reminds me of the thinking that we go through when why we have to clear our mind is because it's filled with all this stormy water and waves and stuff coming over and the worries of life. If you don't clear that out, there's no way for new revelation to fill it back up again. So, but he, he himself was in the stern of the boat asleep on the leather cushion, and he awoke, and they awoke him. Jesus was still in the middle of the storm. He, he, was, he was quite still. He was asleep. And said to him, Master, do you not care? We are perishing. And he, re, he rose and rebuked the wind and said to the sea, Hush now. And then what did he say? Be still. And the muzzled. And the, and the wind ceased that is, sank to a rest as if exhausted by its beating, and there were immediately a great calm and a perfect peacefulness. That's why I hope my be still moment in the morning is going to be where I can forget about all the worries of yesterday and today and, and tomorrow and just be still in His presence. <coughs> can we agree with that? Amen. So the number two be do that, that Lord downloaded me is Right at that, in the same moment, after we're still and calm, and, and we've got, we've 
we've cleared ourselves of the, the troubles of the day is to be thankful. And it's to be an attitude of gratitude. Jesus, when he did his great, most of his great miracles, like feeding the 5,000, started off with, what did he do? He gave thanks to the Father, but then he also blessed the food. So let's go back to that word. He gave thanks, heart of gratitude, looked up, and, and then he blessed it. He consecrated it. And we really technically consecrated it with his own blood. And then he divided it and gave it to the disciples to give it to everybody. Feeding the 4,000, taking the seven loaves uh, of bread and giving thanks. Where other examples do we see where Jesus gives thanks when he, before he breaks the bread or hands out the wine? He gives thanks at the, at the Last Supper. And he, breaks, he gives thanks and breaks the bread and, 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 and gives them the wine. Um, it's really an act of praise and worship is giving thanks. That's also a meaning for blessed, is giving praise and worship. So yeah, I just see that they're just giving thanks. I mean, one of the things that Greg Reed said, he challenged all of us is to wake up in the morning and say, uh, that Greg Reed was the host for this whole conference, said a challenge, 30 day challenge, wake up and give thanks. And just before you go to bed, give thanks and see how your life changes. I don't know who he was talking about who he was going to give thanks to, but I think it would be a good challenge for us to give thanks to God in the morning and give thanks to Him before we go to sleep in 30 days. Let's see what happens. So the next be do is, and this is a, this is a good one, this is a convicting one, is be real. <laughs> oh, be real. One of the, um, one of the guys there that was an amazing... Um, man, uh, a lot of wisdom. I'm still trying to figure out whether it's from God or not, but uh, I won't mention his name now that I just said that. So, <laughs> but he, he wrote a book called Illuminate, and it was pretty interesting. And it's, he says so many people go into his personal development or to the church and everywhere. You know, he talked about a lot of things, and, and they accentuate the positive. They, they, they talk about the positive. It's all positive, you know, positive thinking, positive mental attitude, right? All that kind of stuff. And he says, but you have to do something with the negative, too. Amen. And what he said was, he said, we don't accentuate the negative. We illuminate the negative. Bring light to it so we can deal with it, not just shove it under the carpet. So we accentuate the positive and we illuminate the negative. You know? And, and I, I love Jesus. He's all over the book, uh, all over our word here of, of being real with, with people. He was real with the lepers. He was real with the blind man. Yes. You know, he asked him, what is it you want me to do for you? It was a, he was real with the centurion. Mm. Oh, he knew authority. Uh, he was real with the disciples. He was real, real with the disciples. He was also real with the Pharisees. He got really up yes. in their grill, didn't he? Mm. So he got real. Yeah. Jesus did nothing but be real. Yeah. He wants us to be real with ourselves, to right. accentuate the positive, give us a big pat on the back, illuminate the negative, and, yeah. and, and get help, get, right. get free, right. yeah. you know, if we need to. So, so I, I was led to Matt, Matthew 16, 16 through 23. So this is how real... The disciples were with Jesus. Simon Peter replied, You are the Christ, the Son of the living God. And of course, what does Jesus answer to him? He blessed him. Blessed and uh, happy to be fortunate and be envied are you, Simon Barjona, for flesh uh, and blood, men, have not revealed this to you, but my Father who is in heaven. And in 19, he talks about how he gave us the keys to the kingdom. And then in the Next chapter, he was also really real about what was going to happen to him. And Peter goes, I can't have that happen. You can't go up to Jerusalem and get beaten and spat on and da da da. And, you know. and he goes, Get behind me, Satan. That's being real, Peter. You're busted, Peter. How would you like to be Peter? <laughs> Come on, Lord. Give me a break. So now, you know, what's one thing about, about Jesus is he, he didn't give Peter a break. He didn't give Peter a break. 
Until when? When he just told him to feed my lambs and feed my sheep. Okay, so, number four, <laughs> this is, Kathy's going to love this one, is be free. <laughs> Talked a lot about freedom in, a, in this conference and stuff, and uh, to be a living legacy. Now, freedom is a part of important to that. It's about freedom of regrets from the past, because you can't change them. And it's freedom from worry about the future, because there's nothing you can do about that. Yes. And Jesus said in the Beatitudes, right? You don't have enough worries for today. So we need to stay in the here and now. And you heard a lot about that. Staying in the here and now. So, so being free is, you know, is the spirit of, <laughs> is where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. Yes. Um, you know, we feel the freedom today, right here, right in this room. Amen. We feel freedom. The, li the line of Judah walks in the room. You can't hold any baggage when the line of Judah walks in the room. So, Whom whom the sun sets free is free indeed. Amen. So we break off the chains. Yes. Yeah. Be give yourself the the right and the privilege of becoming free. Amen. Right. Amen. Yeah. Michelle and I sat down the other day because um, we're real real big on after seeing uh, Jimmy Evans and his wife on, on the marriage conference and talking about having a vision for yourself a vision for your spouse and a vision for your marriage and things like that and a vision for your ministry and a vision for you know having a clear vision and so uh, I was sitting with and I said God wants to get that vision out of you right now and it was so easy once I started asking the question and and so this is M Michelle's mission statement she heard my mission statement She goes, that's way too long and complicated. <laughs> I need something simple. <laughs> But I, I, this is her. To help people obtain freedom by knowing God and knowing who they are in God. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> no, that's, that's, good. Oh, that's a nice... <laughs> that's too... <laughs> <laughs> Be free. Amen. So... So you talk about knowing God, how can you be in the presence of God and have any issues, and then knowing our identity in God yeah. and who, what we're supposed to do and how we're supposed to yeah. act and what we're supposed, how we're supposed to be representatives and ambassadors, yeah. even to 200 people who may or may not know them. Yeah. It's been, it, was, it was exciting and a challenge, and I'm sure I'm the only one that had a biblically-based book in the middle of the book signing where there was 40 authors there and I've got the one that's right on the front. People come and look at the byline and they go, huh, oh, well maybe not. <laughs> 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 But I want to tell you something really cool as a little sidebar. So this one lady comes up to me and she has a, 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 a Latino accent and I couldn't remember her name but she comes up to me and she goes, and I wrote in the book, I said, may all your dreams come true. And then I put Ken, I put Jeremiah 29, 11. That's how I signed every book, mm -hmm. okay? And I gave it to her and, and I go, I hope you're, she goes, I hope so. With a really, really very, very humble, I hope, I hope my dreams come true. And I looked her straight in the eye, I go, I know your dreams are going to come true. Just you watch. Come on. Come on. Wow. <laughs> the next day they give away the grand prize, which is thing called the tub of love. It's a, it's a, it's a, <laughs> It's a big giant tub that they throw all these prizes into, coaching and over a hundred thousand dollars worth worth of gifts, oh, wow. and they they do a lottery. The more you participate, the more tickets you get, and and one of those tickets won. Well, guess who won the tub of love? My God. Come on. <laughs> and I walked up to her after she was in a daze. She's like a hundred thousand dollars. What am I going to do with all this stuff? She was in a daze, and I walked up to her and I said, "Do you remember what I said yesterday about your dreams coming true?" Just, just you watch. That's awesome. And she was like, yeah, that's right. So, you know, we can be a blessing in the midst of, um, you know, she needed, she needed that. But she needed to be reminded, too. Yes. Yeah. Yes. So number five, the, the uh, be do is be clear. Mm -hmm. Clarity. And in my mission statement, part of it has to do with these three that I've want to filter. Oh, about mission statement and vision statements. Mission statement is a statement like that one quick one sentence, one or two sentences, and you filter all of your decisions through that. I mean, if it doesn't line up with that statement or is out of line with the statement for her, which is uh, knowing God and, 
and knowing who you are in God, then that's probably not a priority for Michelle. And I think she lives that. She spends more time in prayer than anybody I know, which is great. And she wants to spend more time. Actually, just three days, just three days in prayer coming up right now. Jeff. <laughs> but be clear. So my, my be clears are seek first. Kingdom is righteousness. That's a tall order. <laughs> this king's domain and his righteousness, connection with God. And all these other things will be added unto you. Amen. The other one is love God and others and ourselves. It's another big one, right, for healing. Got to love ourselves, not in a narcissistic way, but we can't give what we, we, we can't get, give what we don't have. So, and then the third one is all authority has been given to us. So therefore go. So I'm pretty clear about that. Now it's a tall order, but that's where we, where Jesus said, your will, not mine. Yes. And that's the big challenge, is when you're clear about where you're going, you just say, your will, not mine. Yes. Amen. Mm -hmm. yes. If we can live like that, yes. the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Come on now. Come on, yes. come on. Glory. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's glory. It's got the glory bubble all over it. <laughs> I got these little Holy Spirit tingles. Or maybe that's the caffeine, not enough caffeine. <laughs> Okay, number. Yeah. <laughs> Your dog has fleas. <laughs> okay, be inspired is number six. Inspired, great word. It means breathe life into. Yes. So, so I love uh, John, uh, Jesus talking to the disciples. John 20, 21 through 23. Oh, I love this. First, he starts out with this, these words. Jesus said to them again, so he's resurrected. He's standing in the room. He just showed them his side and his hands, and they're like, oh. And then he says, peace, peace to you. Whoa, dude. <laughs> That's the... Uh, that's the, the new, that's the Newport Beach version. <laughs> peace, peace to you. As the Father has sent me, so I'm sending you. And having said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive, admit, the Holy Spirit. I don't know why it took almost 50 days for them to actually let it go, but by Pentecost, that... That's when it all came full circle. But he breathed on them and breathed life into them, the Holy Spirit, Spirit of God. After all those years of being with him, Jesus, you finally breathed on me. Great. So I'm, that's one of my favorite scriptures. So we're not only supposed to be inspired, we're supposed to be an inspiration. We're supposed to breathe life into others as well. So, you know, this whole world is kind of a selfish, we, oh, it's about me, it's about me, as we get, you know, and we're not about that. Justin is amazing going out, breathing life into others, and without selfish, selfishness or, or self-centeredness, and nor the need for praise. Praise you, Justin. <laughs> <laughs> and, and I was going to have Justin come up and speak, but after the, the holy the holy ground on here, I said, there's no joking matter right now, but he did, he did do a great job. And he also inspired a lot of people. He really did. And there's something, as we said, I think you were really the only comedian. There was a lot of laughs, but you had a major laugh. And, and, and laughter is like a medicine. And I think Amen. you brought a lot of healing to a lot of people there. Um, they just kept on saying, just giving lots of praises. And Justin could have got a big head, but he didn't. He was totally um, humbled. And in a lot of ways, he didn't even know how to process it sometimes. Because mm -hmm. yeah. it was like, uh, okay, now I'm some kind of, I don't know what it's like to be a rock star, okay? <laughs> so he calls mom. And pop, mom goes like this with the holy, 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 psh, psh. <laughs> And number seven, Okay, so remember, this, this is all about healing, right? Um, the Lord gave me this download of number seven on the B-do's is be strategic. 
strategy. And this is where it starts crossing over in this. All that first six was pretty much an inside job. You and God. Yeah. Okay. But number six, number seven is where we start crossing over. You, you might need help to be strategic, to be strategy. I looked up the word strategy and it really is a, a, a military term. Mm -hmm. It's about plans and, and getting provisions and plans. And because most time they, they didn't have, if you had an overwhelming army and you didn't have, you wouldn't have to have it like the Mongols, you wouldn't have to have the need to be strategic, you just overwhelm. But when you have an army that, um, you know, is working through, in, in, you know, in the, in, the, in the war realm, if you got a, a big opposing army, you have to be strategic with your resources and you have to be strategic about your plans. It actually means this, the art of generals. The root word for strategic or strategy is the art of generals. We've got some generals around here. We've got some generals that, that are in the, in the room, Amen. Pastor. <laughs> so we want to be very strategic. It's a warfare term. And I know Michelle's all about you know, strategy. And I know Sheila's all about getting up there with the, the sword of the spirit and doing the job. So we have to be strategic in what we're doing. And so those, those are really some of the things that I think almost the process that Kathy goes through is being still. We give thanks during a healing session. We get real, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. We get freedom. Right. And, uh, and then we're clear. Yeah. And then we're, we're, it's very inspiring. Yeah. And then we possibly need some strategy to, to make sure that they had whatever was there. You told, you told me, yeah, you told me when you go home, now you can do this for yourself. That's true, that's good. So I'm like, okay, yeah, I can invite Jesus into those uh, uh, memories. I mean, yeah. you could only cover, we didn't have six hours like Ray yesterday, <laughs> so I couldn't cover all my childhood memories. So. <laughs> <laughs> the Holy Spirit revealed to me. All right. No, there's no details. <laughs> I think five and a half hours should be the limit, at least in one day. One day so. Okay, so be strategic. And sometimes that requires outside help for somebody that already knows, that already been in the battle, or you know, to win the battle. I mean, it's really good to have generals that already had some military experience before, right? Okay, so number eight we're going to get into is uh, be connected. Get out and be connected and get networking. You know, we hide behind our social media and we hide behind, you know, our we stay in our our behind our computers and we don't get out. And I, I was a I was a total convicted of this myself. I mean, my database was feeding me. So why did I have to get out in front of people? I just sent an email and people start doing business with me. Well, not too long ago, the Lord said that you can't. You, no man is an island. You can't do that and expect to make any change. You can't bring change if you're stuck. You're stuck behind four walls, and and so us in the church have to go out and get connected too. And so that's why we're when we go to San Diego and we're connecting with people. You know, it's all filtered through our mission statement, but we're not banging the head over you know the Bible over their head because then they'll resist and then they won't become involved in a relation, and then there's no way we can help influence them or the society. So get connected. Jesus had the really uh, the example that we're supposed to look at. Okay, so he had the three. Who are they? The three. Arm's length, as we call them, arm's length people. Peter, James, and John. Come on up to the Mount of Transfiguration. Check this out. He had the 12. He had the 70. And there's one in there I added 500 because that's kind of... Okay, and then there's 5,000, yeah. the multitudes, right? So this is kind of the pattern that we're supposed to have. We have the three arm's length people that are within us. And in fact, with Gary Keller, who runs a, a organization of over 100,000 people, he says there only needs to be five reports, five people under him. 100,000 people way down, well, we'll talk to the top because he is a servant. But only five people have to report to him. If there's any more than five people have to report for him, he, he's scattered, he doesn't do his job. Those five people will have five people to report to him. So Jesus had the three, the 12, that they did life together. You know, we're not much more than 12 here. So he had the 70 that he sent out two by two. So, so they were, and they came back. And, and so that was, you really can't be in relationship with that much more than that, 
really. So that's the pattern for the church. And then there's the 500 and the 5,000, the multitudes. Um, so Michelle's got me going again. She's going always to Hebrews 10, 24, 25, because sometimes it says, do not forsake the gathering of the saints. Because mm -hmm. we kind of like get lazy and, all right, we've got Jesus and, you know, we don't, well, what about our, what our gathering of the saints and, and fellowship and you know, all that kind of stuff. So I've got convicted. So be connected with our church and be connected with the world to bring light into the world. Amen. Number nine, be do is be generous. It's, it's better to give than to receive. And it's whatsoever you sow, you shall reap. I mean, these are, these are right on, uh, that one's in red, I believe. And this is the big one, and I'm going to let I'm going to let Charles answer this. God so loved the world, he gave. he gave. It's a tall order to give your son. Yeah. Justin, you're next. <laughs> <laughs> Justin. <laughs> no, he gave. He gave his he gave his son. And, and so let me do a sidebar real quick about about generosity. First of all, I'm I'm just surprised. I'm I'm just glad. I'm I give thanks that I'm I'm still here because when I was 17, I almost killed myself. Um, but I'm always reminded of that, so I'm always giving back, giving thanks. Amen. But but one of the things that the Jewish church is very very strong at is their ability. Their, first of all, Jews really of of any group have the most most wealth yeah. because they know these concepts, and of course Jesus was a Jew as well. There's a lot of history of that. I can go into a whole, a whole talk about that because I read a whole book called Rich Church, Poor Church, which goes into the details of, of the Jewish community. But let me tell you how that, how that works and how I think it's kind of a, not a model, but something we should bring into our um, congregation and, and be, a, be known for that, is one of the things they do is when a, when a, when a, when a bar mitzvah is, what, 13? Okay, so that's considered when a Jewish young boy becomes an adult. Um, but what they do, the Jewish men always are gathered, in, they gather around and in the synagogues and in their little meetings, in their tribal meetings, they will make sure that this 13-year-old will now have a career. And they will give them the skill set, they will give them the training, they will give them the accountability, they will give them the finances. Okay, so that what they do is that these elders of the, the, the synagogue will gather around this. There are no homeless in the Jewish culture. There are widows and orphans, and they're taken care of. They're taken, but there are no, there's no, oh, I'd say not homeless. There's, there's none that don't go without work. They, they, if they, unless they're crippled or something, they, they, they will, there is no unemployed. It's really the word I meant. So because they, because they teach the child, and then up to a certain age, they are required to have a skill. Now, what was Jesus? He's a carpenter. Uh -huh. even, even the Lord of Lords had to have a skill because that's the Jewish culture. He was, a, he was a carpenter. He would never go hungry. He could always build another table or build another chair. You know, so that's what they teach in, the, in the, Jew, the, re, the Jewish culture. In the synagogues, the rabbi's salary, once the synagogue is fully functional, is about a million dollars a year. The Jewish tithing is not based on 10%. It's based on honor. Because what happens is the, when they're raised up and they're, they're 13 years old and these, these elders get around them and say, we're going to teach you a skill just like my daddy taught my skill and his daddy taught me a skill. We're going to teach you it. We're going to uh, uh, give you the financing. The synagogue is actually a bank. We're going to give you, we're going to give you a financing for it a uh, important one, and we're going to hold you accountable. Come on. Mm -hmm. Come and on. if you get out of line, oh, we're going to take that stuff away oh. from you. You're not, you're not going to go out of, out of line. We're going to help you build your business. And then when you get your business to a certain level, we're going to bring in somebody even smarter than these guys who have brought in their business even to a higher level. And we're going to teach, they're going to come in and they're going to elder you. They're going to yeah. guide you. So that that's how they become rich. Now, out of honor, they will give as much as 30% of their gross they wouldn't have had this if they weren't they weren't brought up they weren't provided the finances they weren't provided the teaching they weren't provided the accountability 
Why do you think they're always so shrewd with their money? That's how they keep it, because they're, they're taught that way. It's their culture. Mm -hmm. And that's why they're so, the, some of the some most wealthiest people on earth. And you know we know about the Messianic Jews. It yeah. wouldn't have, it's an honor to be around them. So that's what, what we're looking at. And the, the church mentality has gotten more of a tithing begging mentality. Yes. Uh -huh. yes. The last yes. of our 10% that we've got instead of first fruits. Yeah. And so it, 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 when you look at the Jewish culture, we should be doing that. We should be, we should be teaching Ruthie how to take those t-shirts. You sold me one, but not, why not sell 12? Yeah. I could have sold 12. I wore it at the book signing. I had a, I had a t-shirt manufacturer come out and say, and I showed her the shirt. And she says, we, we, have, we just bought a 180,000 square foot warehouse where we're going to be doing shirts for, for young ladies and youths and, and teens. And he's a friend of mine. And he's a venture capitalist. So he's got the money. So, so open up opportunities of, wow, you sold me one shirt for $30, but what happens if you sold 100 shirts for $3,000? That's the kind of thing that we want to open up. And I just ask you a simple question. How do we replicate these things? These are yeah. awesome. You said, What's, it's a screen. What a screen? What'd you say? It was a screen? Silk yeah, silk screen. So we could have multiplied it. So those are the kinds of ideas is that you might have never thought of that. And maybe it's, maybe it's just something that you want to do individually for each person, or would you like to multiply it? Both? OK, all right. Yeah. <laughs> true. But I mean, we all, uh, they, you always got to be open to opportunities. Yes. Yes. And you also got to show up. Dustin, uh -huh. yes. we had a really lot work on his confidence. He goes, what do I have to say in front of 300 pe or 200 professionals? Or much less 1,800 people. And he just, the worthiness wasn't there. And, and he's got a good mama praying for him. And, you know, and, and we're praying for him. We're encouraging him. And we get him up there. And we push him up there. And he, you know, okay, he does it. So. <laughs> But, but, <laughs> Jay, is that your new name? But sometimes you need to be pushed, right? But it's okay, but, but don't, don't miss opportunities, and sometimes you just got to show up. Got to show up. So be generous with your resources. Be generous to the church here. Uh, I had to learn a lesson a long time ago, and I'm sure I'll be talking on it maybe next month, a uh, lesson of what happens when you don't give. God says, well, then you don't get. And I don't mean that in a, in a, in a materialistic way. Mm -hmm. I mean that into, he has a kingdom to expand. And part of that yeah. is body, body, mind, spirit, and finances. Because yeah. if your finances are in the trash, yeah. this other stuff, you're not going to be very effective. Finances build churches. Finances yes. build hospitals. Right. Finances, yes. um, finances yeah. can, can help cure malaria. Look what happens with, with Bill Gates. And Bill Gates, oh, let's see, let's, malaria, let's go cure that one. Okay, it takes money. And then when the second, or the, one of the other richest men in the world, what's his name, uh, the, the stock market guy? Warren Buffett says, hey, I've got billions, I can't take it with me, I need to give it away to somewhere it's going to worthy cause. Did he give it to the Roman Catholic Church? Did he give it to the Lutherans? Did he give it to the, the, the non-denominational church? Why? He gave it to Bill. Because Bill stewards that money well, and he's going to go cure malaria or whatever other things, cure poverty in one of the nations in Africa, mm -hmm. whatever it is. So we're supposed to be able to, we should be the recipients of that. Right. But we right. haven't stewarded our, steward our That's right. could you imagine giving away $25 billion? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Write that check. Yeah. <laughs> only got $25 billion left. But we've gotten into a poverty mentality. That's when we talked about this, this, whether it's not really, I don't even worry about it being a 501c3 because it, what, that, that's not what my heart of giving is. My heart of giving is, is because it's to honor you and God. Yes. Yes. The, the man of God and honor God. Yes. All right. So the next one, be do, is, uh, is be compassionate. You know, that's love. Passionate, compassion. And I love the word compassion. It means a lot of things. Uh, the, the breakdown is calm passion. Mm -hmm. And calm means to share with or to do with, to act with. Be compassionate. And passion can mean love. 
It can mean burning desire. It can mean suffering. The, the passion, right? That's kind of the root of the word is suffering. Uh, it can mean dreams. My, my passion is to do this. Okay. But what's really cool is when it's we come alongside as compassion. We do it together. So we love together. We serve together. We suffer together. And we live each other's dreams together. So compassion is a, is a big word, and I think that, that uh, as far as I'm concerned, that I hope we know that this church is full of compassion, that we know that Chuck's right there to come alongside us, and Kathy's helping us, and Carlos is available. Yeah. And, and we're all, we're all in, in, a, in the world of compassion, and sometimes we just have to give thanks to God for giving us the ability to be compassionate. I know I haven't always been the most compassionate person, but I'm working on it. So uh, <laughs> thank you, Justin, for agreeing with me so quickly. But what's really cool about that is that if, since I'm doing this every day, it becomes part of my language. I've, I've memorized this. I forget one every once in a while, but I've, I've memorized it. And I go down this checklist, and it, it just keeps me in order. And the next one, number 11, I'm almost done here, is uh, to be moving. Um, to be moving. The first one was be still. But what did Jesus do? When he was done being still, he was, he was going from place to place and place to place. And he was Jerusalem, and then he was back to, he was on the water and crossing over the Gadarenes. And then he was, he was on the move. And without a car, you know, just, he was, he, he was, he was, he was always, I mean, but we have a car. So, you know, we're, we're, in, we're in the motion. We got to be in motion. That's why I think a lot of Christians end up being just going to stay in the glory zone and, oh. and not get in motion and I mean then there's some Christians that don't stop moving because they work so hard that they need to take a break because it's called a Sabbath my Lord so Amen. <laughs> yeah <laughs> straight to the heart yeah no uh, so we got to be in motion we got to Paul was in motion all the time Paul was moving you know and and but I think Paul took a Sabbath too so we're going to honor the, the pastor with a Sabbath. Can we pray for a Sabbath for, for the pastor? Yeah. Take a day off. Yeah. My, you know, I'm very guilty. My wife says, have you taken a day off yet? Well, it's, well, it's three weeks. I haven't taken a day off. It's easy to do in my business. Yesterday, I took the day off. Read a book. Slept all day. Had a steak sandwich. <laughs> killed a fatted calf. <laughs> I feel better today. <laughs> All right, so get in motion. Um, rolling stone gathers no moss. Okay, last one, 12. Number 12 is be an influencer. Be what? In, be influencing. Be influencing. Influencing means to flow into. So when Jesus influences us, we're supposed to flow out into other people. And so we'll end with the, I love the woman in the well because she is just, she has all the questions and he comes right back with it. Um, but, you know, one of the things about the woman in the well and John chapter four is that she knew her identity as a Samaritan which not supposed to even talk, much less even talk to a Jew. Jesus shows compassion by answering her, if you'd known who it was that, uh, and re had recognized God's gift, and who it, this is saying to you, give me a drink, you would, have asked, uh, you would have asked him instead, and he would have given you living water. So he would have inflowed her with this living water. We love that idea of never having to thirst again and, and, and have this inflow. The, the, the worship leaders have an inflow. So they, they, they drink the water of the living spirit and then they pour it back out so that we can all enter into God's presence. Yeah. And so uh, worship in, and praise is so important. Uh, and he talks about that, right? We need to worship in spirit and truth. They said, well, we're supposed to. So she had it wrong. Well, she had it right, because Jews said, we're supposed to worship over here in Jerusalem, and here she's at Jacob's well. Jacob was a, was a Jew, but they'd kind of intermingled. But now, 
she's going, she's, she asked that question, where, how, where are we supposed to worship? He didn't even say where. He said worship in spirit and in truth. And wow. so, and I, and, and I love it, that um, way he described this, but whoever takes a drink of the water and I shall give him, shall never, no, never be thirsty anymore, but the water that I give him shall become a spring of water, welling up, flowing, bubbly, continuing within him unto, into, for eternal life. So, when it bubbles up and flows over, that's when we can flow into other people. What was the quote that Les Brown said, Justin? Is that once you, once you fill your own cup up, so in, that... In, in water, the rest of the, the overflow Yeah, you. something like that. Fill yourself up first, and then the whatever rolls off. So we fill ourselves up through praise and worship and thanksgiving and, and a heart of compassion and, and study and the Word and the presence of God, and then we're able to pour over, pour over yeah. out from the abundance yes. mm. rather than from mm -hmm. yes. lack. Yes. That's where the whole Sabbath thing comes in. Yeah. 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 So, uh, and I love that what happens is that then yeah, he hits her with a word of knowledge. Five husbands, right? No? Okay. Mm -hmm. And so, but what happened is because he answered her questions, because he talked about spirit of, of uh, the, the living water flowing into her, she became really the first evangelist. Yeah. She evangelized the whole town. <laughs> so, and then they came out and they said, just stay with us a while longer. Yeah. And so that's what we're supposed to do. She didn't go running into the synagogue, or of course they wouldn't allow her in anyways, but she didn't go running. <laughs> I, mean, I mean, come on, she, she, she went into the town. And that's what we're supposed to do as influencers. To be a living legacy, I mean, with all humility, we're, these, these 12 uh, bidus I think are really important and I think that being an influencer and a representative and ambassador for God is, uh, is, is really, really the, is, is altogether a living legacy to be able to uh, live in the temporal and live in the eternal at the same time. So um, I hope that this has been a blessing to you guys and it's been a, it was a blessing to go serve God without them knowing it out there in California. <laughs> And it was, it was a pleasure and a, uh, uh, to take the family out there, but also to share with Justin uh, a dream that I would never think that it would, would have ever, I didn't ever even imagine that we'd be sharing the stage together in major <laughs> influencing territory. And so that's, that's been a blessing. And I never knew I'd be uh, signing books along with uh, best-selling best -selling authors. Uh, one of the guys that was, um, that I shared the, the signing stage with this guy named John Gray, who wrote um, Men Are From Mars and Women Are From Venus. Yeah, he was really good, and he was funny too, and he also has some great revelation about, about health and internal health and probiotics, and it's on his website, and I'm gonna get Sheila to check that out to make sure that it's, uh, that it's right, but. <laughs> But I mean, he, he, he said everything about what he said, that with your mental ability, has so much to do with your, your gut and, and how the GMOs, the, chemis, the chemicals and the GMOs have actually, they're not poisonous to us, but they're poisonous to the good bacteria in our gut and those GMOs kill the bacteria and then we have all kinds of issues and things like that. So we wanna, he also said plastic bottles are not a very good thing either. So, I mean, we all wanna live healthy and long lives and my, I know my mission and vision statement is to get with Michelle and she's studied a lot about health and we just want to become more healthy and, healthy and happy people. So what I, what I did is I've got this book um, that I wrote a couple years ago with Eddie Smith. I want to give it to, we've got to give, give, give. It's better to give than it is to receive. Uh, and it was endorsed by Pat Robertson and uh, Tom Hopkins. Oh, Arthur Blessed. Does anybody know who Arthur Blessed is? Yeah. He's... He has yeah. Guinness Book World Records, the longest walk. Yeah. He carried a cross around the yeah. world for, I think, 15 wow. years. Eddie Smith, my co-author, is 70 years old. And, and what happened was he met Arthur Blessett on Sunset Strip, and they did ministry on the Sunset Strip together before he started his walk with the cross back in 1966 or 68. Yeah. So he's, he goes way back. So I don't know these endorsers, but Eddie does, so that's good. <laughs> and so we wrote a book. I wrote two books. One was the first one was called Power Goal, actually five books, but this one's 
there was power goals, which is 12 steps of, of goal achievement. And I veiled all the scripture in there. In fact, I, I would say stuff like this. One of the wisest and richest men of all time said, without, their, without, without a vision, people perish. I didn't say Solomon said, because I do, once again, that's for a secular crowd, but I'm sneaking in scripture all the way through. Then I went to Eddie, and I said, Eddie, now let's do one for believers and soon-to-be believers. And he took the, basically the same steps, and then he just added all the scripture stuff to it and the references and some of his own stories. And so I wanted to share that with you. I've signed it for everybody. And it's funny because it says, be blessed on every book. I didn't know we were going to talk about blessings today. So. And so, yeah, I hope, th hope this is a blessing to you and, and to you guys. And, and <laughs> speakers, speakers. <laughs> Yeah, you should see them when they walk up. There's, especially the Muslims, they're like, no, I don't know about the you know, biblically based. It's very, very good, very, very good. Um, and if anybody likes, an, anybody likes an audio version of the Power Goals book, anybody likes CDs, ah, glory. <laughs> so anyways, you're not, you can't let the secular world, uh, Allison, did you get one? Oh, you have it? Okay, all right. <laughs> That's okay. Okay, so anyways, we'll close in prayer. And I hope you guys were blessed by that. It's an honor, to, a true honor. So, all right. Okay, so Heavenly Father, what a wonderful time of enjoyment. In, in you. And so, today is the day that you've made, so we will re rejoice and be glad in it. Um, will you please offer your hand of protection and your hand of power as we move forward in your name and be ambassadors this week for the name and the cause of the kingdom? Will your Holy Spirit uh, invade us and keep us, keep us lined up with with heaven and keep us lined up with your purposes for us and through us offer ourselves as a living sacrifice and we thank you we honor you we bless you we praise you lord and we thank you for the opportunity to share our lives and give our lives to you in jesus name so thank you george